Hey, welcome back to the lecture. So before doing the exercises on I2C, we have to cover some important uh, concepts related to the I2C communication. One thing is we have to understand how to calculate the right pull-up resistor for our application. And second thing what you have to understand is the rise time calculation and also we have to understand what exactly is bus capacitance. So these are very important discussion and uh, it will help you to achieve successful communication between devices using I2C protocol. Now let's proceed. First let's learn how to calculate the right pull-up resistance value. Remember that in order to calculate the pull-up resistor so you have two equations. So the first equation gives you the minimum value of the pull-up resistance which is required for your application. The pull-up resistance minimum value is a function of the VCC or VDD which is the main supply for your microcontroller minus VOL max and divided by the current. So basically it is V by I that's it where VOL means a low level output voltage. So ideally the VOL means zero, isn't it? The low level output voltage is zero and the high level output voltage means VCC, right? But in I2C specification up to 0.4 volt, it is considered as low level output voltage. So VOL value you have to get from the I2C specification. Let's go to the I2C specification. So now in the I2C specification, so you can go to the page number 45 and that is actually the table number 9 and here you will get the value of VOL that is low level output voltage when VDD is greater than 2 volt and that is actually is equal to 0 0.4 and the IOL value you can consider as 3 milliamps and after that you can substitute all those values here in order to calculate the minimum value of the pull up resistors for example, let's consider this scenario where the signal is going from high to low, either SD or SCL. So let's say this is VCC and this is zero. So somewhere here is the VOL. So that is 0.4 volt. So when SDA or SCL goes low, that means that this transistor conducts, right? So this is VCC. So the current actually flows here. So that is called as IOL. So therefore this resistance value you can easily calculate by RPU that is minimum is equal to this VCC minus the voltage drop across this that is VOL which is not actually zero. So the maximum value you have to take. So up to 0 0.4 you can consider as low. So that is 0 0.4 divided by the IOL. So that you can take as 3 milliamps. So if you solve this equation you will get the minimum value of the RPU that is pull up resistance. All right, and to calculate the maximum value, you have to use this equation. Here you can see that the maximum pull-up resistance is a function of the maximum rise time. So this is a very important equation because this equation is function of the T-rise and the bus capacitance. So this equation takes into account the T-rise timing and the bus capacitance. So here TR means rise time of both SDA and SCL signals and CB means capacitive load for each bus line. So now let's understand what exactly is rise time. All right. Now here in this case, you can consider this waveform and this can be either SDA or SCL. So you can apply this to any line. Look at TR. So now TR is actually the gap between 30% of the voltage level to the 70% of the voltage level. So that means TR is defined as the amount of time taken by the rising edge to reach 70% amplitude from 30% amplitude for either SDA or SCL. So ideally the TR must be zero, isn't it? So here if you consider this scenario, so what's happening here? So here the signal is actually rising from low to high, isn't it? So but it is actually taking significant amount of time and that time is denoted by TR that is the rise time. This rise time should not be high because if it is too high then it will cause problem during I2C communication. The value of the pull-up resistance and the bus capacitance actually influence this TR timing. So that means the TR is proportional to the RC time constant. 
So if your pull-up resistance value increases or if your bus capacitance increases, then TR increases. So TR increasing means what? So someone is resisting the signal to rise to VCC, isn't it? Right? So that means a signal is facing some hurdle to reach to its 70% amplitude, right? So that is actually a problem. I2C specification is very serious about this problem. So that's why it has given some maximum limit for TR, that is rise time. So this should be 1000 nanosecond for standard mode. So if you are using standard mode, then T rise of a signal, either SDA or SCL, should not be more than one microsecond or 1000 nanoseconds. All right, so I2C spec cares about TR value and you have to respect it while calculating the pull-up resistor value. Higher value of pull-up resistors, so that means weak pull-ups, increases TR value. Why? Because TR is, as I said, directly proportional to the RC time constant. So if R rises, the TR also rises. So this is not acceptable if TR crosses maximum limit mentioned in the spec. So what happens if you select a pull-up resistance with very high value? So you will face some problem like this. So here you can see that the signal is not able to reach the 70% of the VDD, right? So if it doesn't reach 70% of the VDD, that is 2.3 volt in this case, then the signal is not considered as high. So and the slave will receive some garbage values or the I2C communication will fail. Now in the oscilloscope, if you see a signal something like this that means a signal which is failing to reach at least 70% of the VCC or VDD then you should come to the conclusion that RC time constant is very high so that's the reason TR is very high and your signal is not able to reach the 70% amplitude of the VDD now to solve this what you have to do is you have to either bring down the pull-up resistor value so you have to decrease R or you have to decrease the bus capacitance so here RC means I can also write like RP into CB where RP stands for the pull-up resistance and CB is the bus capacitance. All right, so the high pull-up resistance will cause problem like this to the signals. Let's go back. That means you have to lower the resistance value if you face problem something like that. So lower the value of pull-up resistors, also called as strong pull-ups, decreases TR value, which is good actually, but they also lead higher current consumption. So because if this resistance is very, very less, then more current actually flows across this and that means the more current consumption. So that is also bad actually for power aware or for low power applications. So that's why you have to calculate the resistance value using these equations and select one value between the result what you get from solving these equations. All right, so now let's move forward. So now what exactly is bus capacitance? So remember that capacitance means that the voltage level on the signal line can't change instantaneously. For example, consider this circuit or this bus. Here we have, let's say, SEL and SDA lines. And let's say we have connected four devices, one, two, three, and four. And even though if you don't connect any capacitors here, which are not required actually, these are actually accidental capacitors. So basically these are also called as parasitic capacitors. They actually resist or they become hurdle for the signal to rise from zero to high state. So whenever you are calculating the pull-up resistance value, you have to take bus capacitance into account. So that's why this equation is created. So where it takes into account of uh, bus capacitance. All right, now let's understand some points about I2C bus capacitance. The bus capacitance is a collection of individual pin capacitance with respect to ground capacitance between the SDA and SEL, parasitic capacitance, capacitance added by the devices hanging on the bus, bus length, dielectric material, uh, medium, etc. So all these are reasons for the accidental capacitance in an I2C bus. And remember that as your bus length increases, the wire length increases, the capacitance also increases. And uh, also remember that more devices on the bus means more pin capacitance have been added to the bus. All right. After that, bus capacitance limits how long your I2C wiring can be and how many devices you can connect on the bus. 
because there is a limit for bus capacitance in the specification and that we can explore by the specification. So if you go to the table number 10, then you can see that there is a specification value for T rise as I mentioned earlier. So rise time for both SD and SCL signals, so it should not cross 1000 nanoseconds. And bus capacitance, so here it is CB. So the maximum bus capacitance for standard mode is 400 picoparads and it is also 400 picoparads for fast mode. That means your application's overall bus capacitance should not cross this value. All right. So for maximum allowed bus capacitance, you have to check the spec. Let's consider one exercise. So for fast mode I2C communication with following parameters, calculate the pull-up resistor value. So now let's say bus capacitance is 150 picoparad and VCC is 3.3 volt. So how to calculate the bus capacitance? Remember that, so you can calculate this by using capacitance measurement tools or meters, the multimeter or by using some advanced tools, you can calculate the overall bus capacitance, but you can model your bus to at least calculate the approximate value of the bus capacitance. So let's say we have a bus, I2C bus with four devices connected. This is the first device, second device, third device, and fourth device. Now, each device will add its own pin capacitance to the bus. And let's consider that is approximately as 10 picoparad. So each device actually adds 10 picoparads of bus capacitance. So since we have four devices, so we can say that from devices, approximately 40 picoparads of bus capacitance will get added to the bus. And also by considering the length of the wires like SCL and SDA and from other factors like the PCB wirings and uh, by considering the dielectric medium, etc. So we can add another 100 picofarad. So approximately we can consider the bus capacitance of uh, 150 picofarad in this case or even less than that or even more than that. So you have to adjust something like that. So this is approximate value. So in the specification of the I2C device, it will be mentioned actually. So what exactly is the pin capacitance of the device? For example, let's go to one I2C device. So this is actually the DS1307 I2C based real time clock chip. And this works over I2C protocol. So you can interface this chip to the microcontroller over I2C pins. If you check the data sheet of uh, this device, it will give you lots of uh, information about the I2C communication and the recommended settings information. So for example, here you can see that this device can communicate only in standard mode. So that means the maximum serial clock frequency of this uh, device will be 100 kilohertz like that. And you can also see that there is a table called capacitance. So this device actually mentions pin capacitance for SDA and SCL as 10 picofarads. So this you have to consider. So this you have to add to the overall bus capacitance. So approximately we can say that each device will add 10 picofarads of pin capacitance to the bus. And now let's solve this problem. So now here let's first calculate the RP minimum. So RP minimum is equal to, so let's consider VCC as 3.3 volt minus 0.4 that is VOL divided by IOL that is 3 into 10 to the power minus 3. This value is given by the specification and this value is also given by the specification and this is applied voltage to the microcontroller. All right, or you can also say that this is the high state of a GPIO pin. So the IO pins high state means 3.3 volt, low state means zero, or you can also call it as a reference voltage. So this would give you 966 ohm. And now let's calculate RP max, which is actually the function of bus capacitance and T rise. So T rise is 1000 into 10 to the power minus 9, so maximum T rise given by the specification divided by 0 0.8473 into the bus capacitance, let's consider as 150 picoparad, 150 into 10 to the power minus 12. So here, actually, this is not uh, 1000 nanoseconds for uh, fast mode. The fast mode, the value is different, so let's refer to the specification. 
fast mode is actually the maximum T rise is 300 nanosecond. So this would be 300 into 10 to the power minus 9. All right, now let's calculate. So 300 divided by 0.8473 divided by 150. That would give you 2.3 kilo ohms. So your RP should be less than or equal to 2.3 kilo ohms and it should be greater than 966 ohm. So this is the limit for the pull up resistance. It should be greater than 966, no problem. And it should be less than 2.3 kilo ohm. So if you select RP is equal to let's say 2.2 kilo ohm, then it would be a good value, right? So it will also prevent higher current consumption. Also, it takes care of the arise time requirements, right? But if you use blindly, let's say 22 kilo ohms, then it would cause problem for the T rise requirements, right? So the T rise may go out of 300 nanoseconds if your bus capacitance is too high. So basically everything has to be analyzed on the oscilloscope. Great. So in all our exercises, what we practice in this course, actually you don't need uh, the external pull-up resistor. So you can test the exercises with the uh, internal pull-up resistance of 40 kilo ohms because we don't have many devices connected on the bus. And also our wire length is very short. And uh, so we can consider the bus capacitance less than 100 or something like that. But if you are very serious about uh, these uh, resistance values, when you are use developing product based on uh, I2C protocol, then you have to calculate the correct value of the pull-up resistor by respecting the T-rise and also by taking into account the bus capacitance. Great. So that's about the pull-up resistor value calculation, about the T-rise and also about the importance of T-rise and also bus capacitance and uh, with all these details in the from the next lecture onwards let's do some exercises and uh, also in the driver what we have developed so in the i2c driver so we actually didn't configure the t rise timing for the i2c communication so that we have to configure so that we can do by programming the t rise register of the i2c peripheral you can go to the T-Rise register here and I would suggest you to read about this register and in the next lecture, let's complete our I2C in it with T-Rise related settings So because configuring this register is very important. So here you have to mention maximum rise time for FM or standard mode. All right. So we'll do this in the next lecture. So with that note, I would like to end this lecture and let me know if you have any questions.